Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I am coming at you with another Grind My Gears. Uh, grind My Gears. Okay, so there's something going on in the gaming community that uh, I can't sit by and watch any longer. I have to vocalize my opinion. Now, my opinion doesn't mean anything. Uh, but it it's cathartic for me. So it'll let me vent and uh, maybe you'll agree with me. Maybe you'll disagree with me. Maybe you'll agree with all these idiots out there that uh, or or maybe you'll agree with this idiot. I don't know. but what I'm what I'm trying to say is uh, halo. Okay, let's talk about Halo for a second. Halo's been around. I played Halo 1, right? I played Halo 1 back when it first came out, when it was new, right? When it was a new thing. I enjoy Halo, the com and, and I don't know if I played it on the console. Probably not, because I'm really not a console player, uh, computer gamer. I had to have played it on a console, right? It had to have been an Xbox, I think. But uh, I'm not really a big console player. I play almost all my games on the computer. Uh, so I haven't kept up with the Halo uh, series of computer games. Halo 1, 2, 3. I, I remember we had Halo 2, and I watched my son play Halo 2, uh, but I didn't see it go all the way through because I was planning on playing it myself, uh, but never got around to playing it. Never played three, four, five, and six or whatever. Okay. So coming from that position of not a Halo, not a Halo fanboy, okay, not a Halo apologist or whatever, I'm not a white knight for Halo, the computer game, uh, or, or, uh, console game or whatever the TV series okay there's a lot of people out there that are just stupid um, they're criticizing okay first of all let me just say this spoiler alert if you learn anything about the Halo TV series from me then you're doing something wrong because I'm probably not going to give you any spoilers. But let me just say, I thoroughly, 100%, really loved the Halo TV series. Uh, there's only been nine episodes. That was season one. There was a lot of unanswered uh, plot lines. Uh, but having played Halo one, I knew what was going on, right? I, I, I pretty much had a grasp of what was going on. I knew who the Covenant were. I knew who the Spartans were. I knew what Master Chief was. And I kind of knew a little bit about, you know, the backstory. I don't think Cortana appeared in Halo 1. I think that was a much later development. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong about that. But my point is the visuals were excellent. Um, there were, it was gritty. I know there are some people saying it's not gritty, but if you watch the first episode and, okay, it, let me tell you why I like it. Okay, but before I do that, before I do that, this is the reason for this video. There are a number, a number of idiots, stupid people out there that are criticizing the Halo TV series. Okay, well, that's fine. That's fine. You can, you can criticize... The TV... I could pull any TV series out there. I could, I could pull... Star Trek The Next Generation and criticize it. I could criticize Deep Space Nine. Ooh, you guys love Deep Space Nine. Yeah, I could criticize that. 
you know, I I'm a, I'm I love Star Trek. I love all sci-fi. Let me just get that out of the way. I love all sci-fi. I love The Expanse. I love Star Wars. I love Star Trek. I loved um, old series like UFO. You know, remember that one? Yeah, I like, I mean, it gets campy. It's crazy. It's stupid. But that's okay. It's sci-fi. <laughs> You know, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but I enjoy all that. I even like the new Star Trek uh, Discovery. I did not like Discovery. I could not stand Discovery. There were parts of it that I liked, but I couldn't watch the second season. Picard, not really into that. I watched the entire first season, but I just can't get into it. I didn't even open up the second season. I haven't even watched one episode of the second season. But the new one, the uh, Strange New Worlds, it's pre-Kirk. It's like when Pike was the commander of the Enterprise, which if you're a Star Trek fan, you knew that to be the case. Uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. It's 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 pre-Kirk. That's one reason why I liked uh, Enterprise. I thought Enterprise was one of the best Star Trek series. I know, call me crazy. But I like, and, and that's one reason why in, in World War I dogfighting, I like the early war. I like it when it's hard. I I don't like it when it's easy. When it, when it comes easy, I don't like it. I like the hard stuff. Okay. I like the gritty, more more down to earth kind of storylines. And I like I like strange new worlds, believe it or not. Um it's got some flaws, but what doesn't? And that's my point. Every show is going to have flaws. Every show in the world is going to have flaws. But they really pick on Halo and, and the, the things that they pick on are stupid. Like they complain that Master Chief had a intimate moment with this other woman. Now, I'm not going to go into too many details. I'm not going to try. I'm going to try not to spoil this thing for you. But too late, I, I am. So if you're if you're wanting to go watch it, you haven't seen it yet. Uh, this video is probably not for you anyway, because I'm I'm talking about these stupid people that complain about Master Chief having an intimate moment. And to me, being an adult, being a man of needs, someone that has had intimate relations. <laughs> I understand where Master Chief is coming from. I don't know if you hear all that. But these people that are complaining uh, about that scene, I do not think, I think they're virgins. I think they're 40-year-old virgins, or maybe he's not 40, he's probably like 25, but I think he's still a virgin. I think he lives in his mother's basement. Um, I mean, he's wearing an Xbox baseball cap. He's got on his wall a bunch of Xbox stuff. So I feel like he's a console gamer. And I'm going to really offend you if you're a console gamer. Console gamers are not gamers. I don't care what you think. Or let me back up. Maybe they're gamers, but they're not serious gamers. I consider a console gamer to be a dirty casual. So, you know, a, a, a person that gets home from work, jumps on his couch, turns on the TV, cranks up his Xbox, grabs his controller, and plays for an hour or two. Puts it down, eats dinner, does whatever he does in his life. That's not a serious... I mean, he's serious, obviously serious. But... Not really. Not really. 
uh, a gamer is someone like, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tout my own whistle. I'm going to toot my own horn. I'm a freaking gamer. I mean, you can, you can just see all these gaming books back here. You can see, I can't even do the math, uh, all these miniatures all along the walls over there. Um, if I was to turn my camera, you would see an entire wall of miniature games. I have a freaking super expensive gaming computer here that I am recording on right now. I've got three monitors, a microphone, multiple webcams, head tracking, joysticks. Well, it's not even a joystick. It's HOTAS. You know, I've got I've got more money invested in my gaming than I probably do in my kitchen. You know, my refrigerator and the washing dryer and well, not dryer, the well it is, but it's a the, like the dishwasher machine, the oven, the microwave and the Keurig and all that stuff pales in comparison to the amount of money I've spent on gaming. Okay, so we'll just we'll just leave it at that. But this guy, he's probably got his $299 Xbox. He's probably got Halo free when he bought the game system. Uh, and he's now recording videos, you know, on a laptop complaining about the Halo TV series. And specifically this one scene where Master Chief gets a little nooky. You know? Uh, I don't... I, first of all, Master Chief is probably in his late 20s. Okay, by now. He was abducted when he was like 10 years old. So between the time of 10 and forever, he's been a virgin. Okay, because of the training he's going through. He's been implanted with a number of mind-altering implants, uh, one of them being a emotions uh, suppression, right? Uh, and this is all talked about in the TV series, so I don't know why these guys are, you know, stressing over the situation. And then he... He, di he discovers that this chip is holding him back from understanding this alien artifact. Okay, so I'm not, I, you know, so he cuts it out of himself. He gets a knife and he goes, you know, he's he's got no emotions. He doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Stick and jab and yank, right? So he gets this chip pulled out of his body. Now, I can only imagine the wave, the, the flood of emotions that just all of a sudden manifest, just boom. Can you imagine all these pent up emotions that you've had for 25 or 15 years and uh, you didn't know you had and then boom, and now you're experiencing the world for the first time? I get it. I get that. And they portrayed that well in in the series. Steven Spielberg knows what he's doing. Okay. So we've got this uh So we got this Master Chief and then to tie it all together the alien artifact, think of it like a matchmaker because the alien artifact is uh, we still don't know. We still don't know. But the alien artifact has this bond with Master Chief 
and this girl, right? And when Master Chief and this girl get together or in close proximity to each other, they start to experience each other's uh, mind. You know, they go, they, they, they have like an out-of-body experience and they see these visions. And to me, that tells me that they have a bond that really can't be explained, right? And then and then um having them have an intimate moment in private is not a far leap. <laughs> but I guess if you've never had sex before, you would just automatically say, what the hell? You know, she's the enemy. You're just going to take your clothes off in front of the enemy? I mean, yes. <laughs> it's been done before. I mean, just think it's, just think of, uh, Swalwell or whatever. Okay. We won't get into any of that. Okay. So, uh, that's just one thing. There's other things, um, that, that they don't like. Uh, and like, there's this one character in the show, uh, She was in the very first scene of the show, right? And she ha she plays a part that nobody really knows why she's in the show. And she she has her own arc, her own path that she's going on that uh is parallel to Master Chief. They don't, I mean, they, they do, their, their paths cross, but it's kind of like an alternate story within this Master Chief story. P these gamers don't get that Halo is not about Master Chief. That's, that he's a, he's a character in the Halo universe, what is Halo? Um, this is something that I think this is my critique of the show. Actually, in in my, I believe that Halo. I this is what I thought it was. Was the planet. This man-made uh, ring, ring world that goes around a star, right? So you are familiar with like Dyson spheres and ring worlds and things like that, right? Well, this one is the halo is supposed to be a man-made, which I'm sure it wasn't made by man, it was probably made by some ancient civilization, that made this world that is a disc or a, uh, a, a ring around the central star. And so when you're standing on the world, on the inside edge of this ring, you can see the world arc up in the distance, right? And that ring is the halo, right? And uh, if, if the games have deviated from that storyline, which I don't know if they have or not, but if they have, I'm, I'm sorry for the games because the universe is supposed to be about that ring. The entire first couple of games took place on that ring the tv series has did not there's only moments but it doesn't even they don't even know it exists which which tells me 
a couple of things. This is pre-first game. This is John's origin story. And if you go into any of the movies, uh, like the Assault on Reach or whatever, it talks about John's origin. And so you see how he was abducted. You see how they were replaced with clones. You can see that uh, they were, uh, how they were genetically modified. And some of them didn't survive through the training and how John became the leader of the Spartan team and that how he got promoted and became the master chief, right? Uh, as, as a young lad growing up and how he really doesn't know anything but the military and uh, because of the way he was brought up. And all of that in the Reach series leads into, or the Reach movie, leads into the TV series perfectly, perfectly well. There are people saying, oh, this is an alternate timeline. Is it? It doesn't seem like it is. It seems like it's the perfect timeline. You know, it's right on, right on par with what I know of Halo, which is not a lot. And, uh, okay, so, like, even, even Angry Joe, you guys know Angry Joe, he's, he reviews computer games and usually does a really good job. Uh, but I think, and, and this is just, this is just me saying, I, I might or might not know. I think he makes a living being angry. I mean, his name is Angry Joe, right? So even if he, even if he loved the TV series, I think he would pretend to hate it. Um, but that's just one, right? So I can't trust him. He's always negative. And then there's uh, this other guy. I won't, I won't name him. I can't remember his name, but he's got an Xbox hat on and he's talking about the exact same thing verbatim as Angry Joe. And then there's a couple of other guys I watch, and they complain about the sex scene, right? Um, and uh, so, what I'm what, okay. Make a long story short. What I'm trying to say is that TV series was really good. It's really good. I'm looking forward to season two. I wish it was longer. Nine episodes to me is not a TV series. That's a half season. Um, I'm used to TV series that are 20 plus episodes long. Nine episodes is just not a TV series. I'm, I apologize. It's not Picard. Eight episodes, not a TV series. Nine episodes, not, that's a mini series, right? Guys, get on it. It's not a series. You got to have... And, and because it's only nine, they had to cram in a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. So they had to do all this character development, rapid pace. And when you do that, the audience tends to miss things or misunderstand things. And that's where you get the hate, I think, I, I believe. But I can see past that. I can see past. I've, I've got more... I've got more uh, intelligence or more uh, grasp of what they're trying to do as a as a movie maker myself, as a script writer, and as a as a uh, as a as a creator. I understand that uh, it's tough, right? But what did what did they get across in this series? John was abducted. He was manipulated. Uh, they even showed a few scenes of him being a kid. He was implanted. He was brainwashed. 
he there's there's an a, there's aliens. Okay, let me let me talk about the aliens, the covenant, right? Um, in episode one, it was so graphic, and I mean horrific. It was horrifically graphic in episode one that I told my son, who has his own son, not to let him watch it. I said, John, you, and his name is John, you know, he's the master chief. Uh, no, I said, John, watch Halo episode one and make a determination if you think your son should watch that. Uh, the reason why I say this, and it breaks some social norms, right? It breaks some rules that you're not allowed to do in computer games. But in movies, I guess it's okay, or TV series, it's okay. Because in the very first scene, there are these teenagers that are getting away from their families, going out into the woods to do teenager stuff, you know, to get to get into trouble, just to be, you know, just to be wild kids, you know, totally understandable. We all we all understand it. They're out there. They're doing their thing. The Covenant show up. I'm not going to get into all the details, but the Covenant show up and start shooting at them. And when a Covenant blaster hits one of these kids, the kid explodes. I mean, body parts, blood and guts spray everywhere. They get all over the other kids. The kids freak out. They start running. The Covenant blast a few more of them. They blow up body parts, arms and legs everywhere. It's horrible. It. I was not prepared for that. Um, it doesn't bother me, but I wasn't prepared for it. So I'm thinking here, ooh, you know, Halo, computer game. They're going to get hit. They're going to lose some health, you know. They're going to they're gonna fall over and go, oh, I've been hit. You know, it's one of those kind of deals. No, they're running. Boop, boom. And, I was, and I'm sitting there watching the show. Doo, doo, doo. Whoa. You know, <laughs> I was like, they're serious. You know, I was like, these guys, they are serious about this. And I was like, and then I'm sitting on the edge of my seat, like, okay, who's going to get hit next? You know, it, it was, and okay. And then they make it to the, the village with the rest of the families and you see them take out their energy swords and jam it straight into people and pull it up out of the top of their skull. You know, there's people getting their heads cut off and there's people getting burned with fire and you know, it was the first, I don't know, 15 minutes of the series was just brutal, right? But then after that, it didn't really get like that. It was, I mean, that was just like a slap in the face, like, we're here, watch this damn thing. And I was like, okay, I'm watching. But then after that, it got kind of mellow. And yeah, there's some fight scenes and there's some, there's a, uh, there was a raid on the military compound and stuff like that. But the military compound, I can see as being prepared for it. And the guys, you know, they, I had already experienced episode one. So if anybody blew up, I kind of expected it now. You know, it, it had desensitized me to all that. Which I thought was a very good artistic... Um, representation they were trying to get an emotion across and they did that or at least i think they did a good job in letting you the viewer know the covenant were not to be messed with they're bad guys they're the enemy right they kill people you know they're not nice they're not they that's why they're the enemy etc cetera, etc cetera. So they wanted to teach you, the audience, a lesson. Basically, educate you 
on the covenant, you know, that the, that the um, humans have known already for years, but you as a viewer might not know that, especially the broader audience that doesn't know anything about Halo. They just turned it on to see, hey, what's this sci-fi show about? I heard it's got good reviews. Doop, turn it on, and then boom, oh my God, what's going on? You know, and they want, they. I think they did a really good job. And then they pulled back from that, and then they got into the science of it all. They started dealing with the scientists and the government and the political intrigue and the backstabbing and the the covert actions of what's going on behind the scenes. And I think they did a really good job of that. And there are people that are saying, me, 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 me. it's all supposed to be Master Chief and it's supposed to, we're supposed to see Master Chief. No, no, we're not. They're trying to tell a story and you're not listening. That's what I'm saying. They're trying to tell you the Halo story they're trying to let you as a viewer, especially those of you that have never played the games, know who the Covenant is and who Master Chief is and how he became to be. So they had to get into the science of it, the computer, the cloning, the genetic engineering and all that had to be explained. And it was and it was done very well. I grasped it all. I, I understood everything they were trying to say. I understand that there were multiple factions in the government and they don't always see eye to eye, right? And so I get that. And that's the way it is today, right? Um, and then they go back to that girl. There's this one of those teenagers survived. And then it became her story, the survivor story, how she uh, was part of the rebellion against the human government and all that stuff. And she's the Luke Skywalker of the, of the Halo universe, right? She's the, she's the, uh, the, she's the boy from Tatooine, right? It's a desert world as well, right? And so she like goes to the main city, most Eisley, it's not what it's called, tries to, gather forces, uh, you know, and then somehow John, um, is told to go back and kill her. And there's, there's, and, and he, he feels like it's the, the wrong order to do it. He basically has a obligation to disobey unlawful orders and so he disobeys and they get mad at him because he's supposed to be a robot you know he's emotionally controlled so he decides to cut the emotional control chip out of him and i'm getting the story a little bit off but it basically it progresses slowly but but it had to because there are multiple aspects to why certain things were happening now, could they have had him go back to kill the girl, picked her up, going to take her back to Reach, decide on his own, like once he gets the order to kill her, to say, no, that's not the right order, not kill her, and then take her to someplace safe, drop her off, and then that be the end of it? They could have done that. They could have just broke away from her story and stayed with the Master Chief. But that's not what Halo is about. Halo is about all the intricacies, all the um, tribes and sects, uh, sect, S-E-C-T, uh, the, the tribes and the uh, governments and the political intrigue and the backstories and why people are doing certain things. Uh, it's not all about Master Chief. I understand he's the main character and he's the, he's the, like a center focus, but there's all this stuff going on around him that needs to be explained. 
I think they did a good job. I mean, there are a lot of things that they didn't touch on, but then you can't do that in nine episodes. You know, that's that's the flaw of a nine episode season is you just don't have the time to do everything. You, you have to pick and choose what's the best to do. So they went back to this Quan character and they uh, followed her for a bit to kind of let you know what her situation is. They even had another villain come in and hunt her down and stuff. And then one of Master Chief's trainee um, friends who left training when he realized what was going on early when he was a kid, he left training, and but he was still pretty much a Spartan. He brought her to him to protect and then his story with him being a little bit of a crime overlord, warlord on this asteroid uh, was kind of a cool backstory. They had all these little side stories that all kind of intertwined into each other. I like that. I, I like the fact that it's not always Master Chief. And then finally... In the last episode, episode 9, they went into Master Chief's helmet and you saw the computer game, right? You saw his ammo counter on the rifles and you saw him shooting and turning and it looked a lot like the computer game, console game. Uh, yeah, so, and then at the very end where he has to kill himself... Uh, but he's not dead, but he is dead. And Cortana's, you know, the necromancer and taking over his body. And it's, uh, one of the last things she says was, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to bring you back. You know what that means? He's coming back, right? That's a, that's a hundred percent guarantee. He's coming back. When you say you're not, you're not sure if you're able to come on. <laughs> So, uh, but his squad is now on his side. They're, they, uh, they trust him. You know, they, they believe in him and Cortana now. They see Cortana as a member of the team. And it, and it, 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 uh, I thought it was good. I don't know. I just, I thought it was good. And then they were, they were complaining about how, uh, okay, uh, here we go. Before episode nine, in episode eight and before, they were always complaining. Why, why are these, why are these uh, elders for the covenant working with this human and using and calling her, you know, and, and treating her like this, uh, you know, like this, uh, oracle or this this protected being and and why do they love her and you know they raised her and blah 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 and uh and then i'm like guys you know you use the enemy they're they're using her you you got to see that on episode one or two or whenever she appeared you know that she's brainwashed you know that she's she's being used right and then on episode nine the elders go yeah, when we're done with her, let's just kill her. So you knew it. I mean, it was revealed at the end. So all these guys that complain about it, and it were like, why are they working with her? It's obvious. You guys are just stupid. Okay, I'm going to stop saying it. This video was made in response to all those negative comments about Halo and how a horrible series it was and how it got everything wrong I'm going to say, I don't care if it got anything wrong. I don't, first of all, I, first of all, I don't think it did. I think it all works in the TV series. If you go into the TV series with an open mind and you watch it and you listen to what they're saying, understand that there are things that 
Spielberg and his team don't want to reveal to you until season two or season three. So Quan's story is not over. Uh, I can't remember his name, but it was uh, John's buddy that had a messed up arm that lives on the asteroids. His story's not over. John and his team, his little Spartan group, their story's not over. Uh, what's her name? Uh, the, the scientist. Um, Halsey. Her story is not over because they when they captured her, they didn't capture her. They captured a clone of her. So she's out there doing her thing. Uh, so none of their stories are over or sealed in fate. One thing that is over is the the girl that John slept with was shot by one of his own men because she was using the artifact and trying to get some coordinates or something. But now John has both of them. He's got the main one and the and the keystone and they're going to be able to figure something out. My guess is this is my guess this artifact maps out a course or a location of the ring, the uh, the halo. And then once they find it, they're going to go to it, and then that'll be like the start of game one. It's when they get to the halo. And they establish like colonies or something on this halo. Okay, so I think it's a it's a pre pre game uh, TV series. I think it's got a lot of different storylines, which is good. It doesn't focus on just Master Chief, even though they do put a lot of time with Master Chief, but it's not just him. It's the and and they tie everything together. I think Spielberg did a really good job. I I believe in him. And I believe in this story. And the graphics are awesome. I didn't... I even told my wife the other day, or, or before episode one, I said, I don't know how they're going to do the Covenant. You know, what are they going to do? Is it going to be computer graphics? Is it going to be a guy in a rubber suit? You know, what is it going to be? And then when the Covenant actually attacked, I was like, damn, they did a really good job. I mean, yeah. I mean, it looked really good. I think that it wasn't cheesy graphics you know like some of the star trek shows all right guys i've had enough complaining i worked up my blood pressure enough i'm going to move on i'm going to let you guys watch halo on your own watch it with an open mind if you've already seen it reevaluate what you thought about it if you didn't like it think about it sleep on it think about what i said and I'll catch you in the next one.